good evening last class and before last we finished the crypto games the crypto games include algae fungi bryophyta and heredophyta uh, and we started phenero games among the phenero games the we finished gymnosperms today we are starting the angiosperms angiosperms and also their characteristics and classifications etc so the angiospermos angios means enclosed sperma means a seed so the plants having enclosed seeds plants having enclosed seeds so the seeds inside the fruit so if you happen to see the angiospermic plant here you can find this is the gynoecium and inside the gynoecium you can find the ovules so after pollination fertilization what happen the ovule this ovule becomes the fruit sorry this ovary becomes the fruit and these ovules become the seeds so the seeds are inside the ovary and another thing since they are having ovary they produce fruits those are the important characters of these angiosperms so they evolved from the gymnosperms with more diverse modifications they are having ovary hence they produce fruits as i told you they since they are having the ovary they produce fruits inside the fruits they have seeds so the seeds are protected inside the ovary the next thing the angiosperms are classified into dicotyledonae and monocotyledonae depend upon the number of cotyledons they have the dicots generally having two cotyledons and monocots having a single cotyledon so if you happen to see the structure of these uh, seeds the first one the seed the dicot seed this dicot seed having two cotyledons and uh, if you happen to see here you can have only one cotyledon here if you happen to see here a dicot seed if you happen to see here you can have a seed coat outside and inside you can find this embryo is like this so now what happen this is the radical from which the root system develops the center one is the plumule from which the shoot <coughs> system develops so here the seed like this and from this radical develop into root system and from here you can find this plumule gives the shoot system so in the same way here you can have in monocot where you have only a single cotyledon and here also can have the plumule and the radical the root system develops from the radical and the shoot system develops from the plumule in addition in monocot you have a covering around the plumule and an a cover around the radical the protective cover of the radical is known as folio rhiza folio rhiza around the protective cover of the plumule folio pile you have to remember two things and the very important thing you have to remember the cotyledon of monocot is called scutellum a technical term you have to learn the cotyledon single cotyledon of monocot is called scutellum and another important thing around the endosperm you have a single proteinaceous layer that is called alluron layer alluron layer it is a protein layer around the endosperm of monocot seeds <coughs> next what is morphology morphology is nothing but the form size and structure of organs of living plants okay morphology is nothing but the structure of external characters while studying the external characters of a plant mainly divided into two branches one is called vegetative organs study the vegetative organs and study the reproductive organs the vegetative organs include root stem and leaves reproductive organs include inflorescence flower fruit and seeds the all things we will learn soon one by one we will learn now you see it is a, a typical plant with the plant parts you know the portion of the plant which is found below the soil that is called the root system and a portion of the plant which is found above the soil is known as the shoot system 
the root system consists of a main root is there in the center there is a main root and then you can have the branches secondary tertiary roots root hair root caps etc etc are found in the root system whereas in the shoot system the main trunk that is called the stem main trunk this is stem and it is having branches and leaves etc in a leaf in a branch if you happen to see either on a branch or on the shoot the place where the leaf is developed that is called a node node is a place where the leaves develop and the distance between two successive leaves is known as internode at the axis of the leaf sometimes we have the axillary buds at the tip of the stem we have terminal bud so the terminal buds may be present at the tip of the main stem or the branches so these are the parts of a typical plant and the stalk of the leaf is known as petiole stalk of the flower is known as pedicel so these are the structures next let us see what are the characteristics of a root the root is generally since it is in the ground it is brown in color not in green that is not in green color it is brown in color it is positively geotropic and negatively phototropic the root system away from the light and it goes towards the light so positively geotropic positively geotropic and negatively phototropic they do not have nodes and internodes in the root system you don't find nodes and internodes and lateral roots are developed endogenous in origin that you have to remember endogenous means develop in inner layers of the tissues that is from pericycle the lateral roots that is called endogenous if they develop from the epidermal cells that is called exogenous the development of the branches and also the leaves is exogenous but here it is endogenous development of lateral roots regarding now let us see regarding the uh, root tip how it is the reasons of the root if you happen to see in a root a root tip if you happen to see there you can find the lower portion i will show that one the lower portion where you can find a root cap and the next the region of is a meristematic region you can find above that the cells are elongated and then you can find the uh, root hairs are there and maturation from this maturation you can find the lateral roots are developed so now you can see here clearly so in this you can find this at the tip you can have a root cap is there the root cap may be single layered or sometimes many layer just like pandanus a plant is there where you can find many layered beyond this you can find meristem is there meristematic tissue it is always giving new cells a divide a divide a divide and giving new cells after the formation of the cells the cells belong to just the elongate elongate the size that is the elongation and then you can find the formation of the root hair this is the root hair region beyond that you can find the area of maturation and now you have to remember the root hair region is very important for absorption of water and then the region of elongation is very very important for absorption of mineral salts so people used to think many people that both mineral salt absorption and water absorption takes place from the root hair that is not the case here can find absorption of water from the root hair and minerals from the region of elongation and beyond this area of maturation the development of lateral roots <clears throat> what are the types of root system generally there are two types of root system one is called tap root system another is called the adventitious root system a tap root system develops from the radical i told you already it is developing from the radical and uh, of the embryo it gives secondary and tertiary roots further branches give rootlets this is this having this tap root system see look here the radical gives the main root from this main root the secondary roots develop from this secondary roots tertiary root roots develop and from the tertiary root rootlets are developed so this is the characteristic feature of dicot plants example tamarind and bean are some of the examples of tap root system next the adventitious root system adventitious root system is a root system 
that develops other than the radical, not from the radical. It may be from the stem or it may be from the branch. So, root develops from any part of the plant other than the radical is called adventitious root system. It may develop from the base of the stem or nodes etc. In monocot plants, the primary root is short lived. This is very interesting in monocot plants where the primary root or radical gives the root system and it is short lived. It dies immediately. So that what happened, this is the stem. So that a bunch of roots develop from the lowermost node of the stem and they look, they are look like in, just like fiber, it is called a fibrous root system. Example, this type you can find in monocot plants. So, they are uh, thread like and equal in size, in length. So, they are looking like fiber, it is called a fibrous root system found in paddy and wheat, those photographs we can see now. So here, these two excellent diagrams you can see. So the first one, the main root gives the secondary, tertiary roots, etc. And the second one, the fibrous root system, from the base of the stem, you can find a bunch of roots of same size and same structure, which you can find in monocot plants. Next, functions of the root. So regarding the functions, some are uh, primary function, some are secondary functions. The primary function is anchorage. So the roots have to anchor the total plant, whatever the length and weight of the plant is to anchor. And another is absorption of water, absorption of minerals, etc. takes place from the root system only. This is the primary function. The secondary thing what happened, in addition to these things, plants have to carry some other functions like a storage, additional support, Austerial function, assimilatory function, respiratory function, symbiosis function, etc. So, to do these extra functions, the roots have to change. Such changes are called root modifications. So, to carry, in addition to these normal functions, plants roots have to carry some extra function. To do those extra functions, the roots have to change. Such changes are called root modifications. So, as I told already, so in addition to the primary functions like absorption and anchorage, some roots perform some extra or additional functions. To carry those extra functions, roots have to change such modifications. These are called uh, root modifications. They are classified into taproot modification and adventitious root modifications for interest only. Actually, you can see what are the modifications in a line, but here you can understand what are the taproot modifications and what are the fibrous root modifications. So now the taproot modifications and have a change. The first modification, the roots store food material and become swollen. Those are called uh, the storage modifications. In this, different depend upon the shape, conical, fusi form and nappy form shape. And in the breathing roots, another one is a taproot modification. These are called the nematophores or respiratory roots. We can find in plants which are going, growing just growing in marshy areas. Uh, I will show the photograph. So now the first one, they store food material and have different shapes. So, depend upon the shape, the first one, conical shape, cone shape or conical shape, where you can find the base is very broad and slowly taper, slowly taper, you can find in carriage. Whereas in fusi form, where you can find, it is swollen in the center and both sides taper, example radish, and in a nappy form, it is swollen and abruptly, abruptly or it is called tapering. Abruptly tapering, you can find in beetroot. I told you already, nematophores. Force means stalk. I already told in fungi. Four, P H O R E four means stalk. So these are the breathing roots or respiratory roots or nematophores are all same. So a projecting straight outgrowths, which the root here, what happened? This is positively phototropic and negatively geotropic, opposite to the normal root system they come upward. So, since they have come upward, they are called fours and then they are having minute openings. In the nematophore, they have minute openings are there through which the gaseous exchange takes place. 
these openings are called nematodes toad means opening toad means opening since that having the nematodes they are called nematophores actually generally found in mangrove plants and just like in pichavarum you can find these things and abyssinia rhizophora they facilitate gaseous exchange through these pores these pores are called nematodes the next we have the adventitious roots so for interest the adventitious roots are classified into four types the first one is another storage by adventitious roots previously we studied storage by tap roots here storage by this adventitious roots and sometimes adventitious roots give additional support and some vital functions and reproductive function we will see one by one the first one storage functions here tuberous roots no definite shape here you can find in sweet potato a two adventitious roots develop into these roots with their different shapes etc this you can find in sweet potato the second one fasciculated fasciculate means bunchy bunch of roots develop from these adventitious roots so these bunch are different these are the underground uh, tuberous roots of different shapes example asparagus next nodulose nodulose this is very interesting here you can find in uh, turmeric and uh, mango turmeric also mango ginger mango ginger also we can find these things in the additional these adventitious roots at the tip it is bulging tip is bulging so this type is known as nodulose nodulose means nodule like structures are found at the end of the adventitious roots example turmeric next stilt roots stilt roots are also called supporting roots the roots from the stem base the loose soils generally the plants grow in loose soils for giving some extra support from the each node etc each node some extra roots develop and they develop and bend obliquely downwards and give extra support here you can find example maize the same you can find stilt roots in pandanus also another plant there you can find this type of stilt roots next we have adventitious roots from the stems from the stems adventitious roots so the lateral branches growing and from this the some branches grow horizontally downwards horizontally downwards and uh, they enter into the soil and they give extra support since these are looking like pillars so these are called prop roots prop means pillar or support props so since they are looking like uh, props these are called prop roots which you can find in banyan tree banyan you can find this type of additional adventitious roots known as prop roots the next you have advent this adventitious roots from the stem base another example climbing roots some plants like pothos and also pepper there you can find what happen the additional adventitious roots developing from the nodes and they will get support and climb with the help of those roots they will climb on the support here roots arise from the stem nodes that fix plants with adhesive disc to wall and trees generally without any support it has to climb so that at the end of these additional roots there is a disc like structure is there so that it fix on the plant or wall or another plant etc for climbing purpose so since these roots are developing from the nodes that fix those are called help for climbing purpose these are called climbing roots next epiphytic roots epiphyte means a plant which grows on other plant is known as an epiphyte remember the difference between an epiphyte and a parasite epiphyte lives on the other plant only for the support support purpose and aeration and for light whereas a parasitic plant lives on another plant and get the food material obtain food material from the supporting plant that is the difference between a parasite and an epiphyte epiphytes are plants which grow on other plants only for the support purpose getting air getting sunlight only 
So in such plants what happen, uh, it produces two types of roots. One type that is called the clinging roots which help to fix it and the support. So the red colored one is a supporting plant and the green one is our epiphytic plant. So now clinging roots, in addition some broad branches are, are what's called a spongy like tissue found in these roots. These are called a special types of roots and they have a spongy type tissue like a dead tissue. It absorb atmospheric moisture and supply to the plant and supply to the plant. So with the help of sunlight these green leaves prepare food materials, green leaves food materials. Sometimes what happen from the bark of this supporting plant also bark of this one also they get some nutrients, some minerals that are for its living. This type of plants this produce epiphytic roots example Vanda. Vanda is the name of the plant. The green colored plant is Vanda and red colored one is a supporting plant. The next we have to see the photosynthetic roots. Generally you know the photosynthesis is carried out by stems and also the leaves or green part. Here what happened the plant is very small so that the roots are produce photosynthetic materials which are called roots which prepare food materials by photosynthesis are called photosynthetic roots. These are also epiphytic plants which have green flatted velamen roots. Those velamen roots here yeah, they are green in color and carry the photosynthesis. Example Taniophyllum. Taniophyllum here in the photograph of uh, not clear but it is a Taniophyllum plant which give, which live on other plant and the leaves this roots are green in color and obtain food material sorry and prepare food materials by the roots. Example Taniophyllum. Tinospora like that. <coughs> Regarding the last type of uh, roots, these are called hostorial roots. Hostorial roots means the roots produce, a, a, the plants produce a sort of roots, those are hostorial in nature and uh, absorb food materials or absorb water or both from the supporting plants. These are parasitic plants. The table is given, uh, remember, just note down. Here you can find the parasites are of two types here. Some are stem parasites, some are root parasites. That is the plant gets these nutrients from the root that is a root parasite. From stem it is a stem parasite or it is found on the stem root, there is branches etc. That is a stem parasite or it uh, having attachment with the root, uh, a root parasite. Here again two types, a total stem parasite and a total or partial stem parasite. A total stem parasite is one, it obtain both water and food materials from the stem. So generally it is having a connection, you know these uh, uh, minerals and water absorption or the conduction takes place through the xylem and uh, the transportation of food materials takes place from phloem. Since this plant gets water, minerals and food materials having an austorial connections, a root connections with the both xylem and phloem and obtain the food materials. Whereas a partial parasite, generally these par partial parasites are green in color, they get only water from the supporting plant. So that it is having a connection with the xylem of the host plant. With the help of chloroplast etc. these plants are green in color, they carry photosynthesis. So that is the difference between a total parasite and a partial parasite. Total parasite gets food material, water and minerals etc. from the supporting plant or host plant so that it has a connection with the xylem and phloem of the host plant. Whereas a partial parasite it gets only water and it prepares its own food material so it has a connection with the xylem of the host plant remember. So now let us see the photographs of these plants. As I told, again I am reading, look here, a parasitic plant, parasitic plants may live either on the stems or on roots or other plants, of other plants. They may be total parasites, obtain both water and food materials from, the, from its host or partial parasites, obtain water from the host plant and prepare food material by their own. 
these parasitic plants produce peg like outgrowths as i told you already these parasitic plant this is the host plant these parasitic plants produce a peg like outgrowth and enter into the host cell and absorb food material sometimes these hostorial connections may be just like a finger like connections so these are called hostoria with the help of hostoria they obtain water or food from the host plants so parasitic plants produce peg like roots which penetrate into the host tissue and obtain food or water or both from the host plant so out of interest you can note down these plants or see and enjoy the uh, complete stem parasites this is the cascuta plant the green color one is the cascuta plant and uh, it is a total parasite it is yellow color yellow color sorry yellow color and uh, the only thing is getting food material from the host plant and produces flowers and fruits so it produces the white flowers and fruits this arsenthobium this is another plant it grows on other plant this is the supporting plant and uh, it gives flowering and fruits only flowers and fruits that's all the next one partial stem parasites see look here they are green in color partial stem parasite this is the supporting plant the big plant is supporting plant the green color plant is the viscum it grows on the plant it gets only water and produce flowers and prepare its own food material and there is a loranthes and here you can find supporting plant the black color one is supporting plant this uh, little small branches this one is the loranthium plant green in color it obtain only water from the supporting plant next complete root parasite complete root parasite this is rafflesia i think you know this is uh, the biggest and heaviest flower and the only thing is this rafflesia and it gets both food and water from the supporting plant and gives flower only that's all the next example that is orobanki here you can find the violet color flowers orobanki it is connected with a root generally in the tobacco plantation it is a parasite in a tobacco and it gets contact with the tobacco plant and absorb food material completely water so this is orobanki next we have the <coughs> so these are partial root parasites partial root parasite i told you already they get only water from the supporting plant in the first one it is a striga this is generally in our agriculture fields you can find this is striga plant it gives a uh, different colors of uh, flowers the violet and the brown and uh, sometimes you can find the pink color flowers it is having a connection with the majority of the grass plants only grass roots having a uh, parasites with the grass plants and uh, second one it is a sandalwood plant this is sandalwood plant at least seedling stage only it is a parasite after that it is an individual plant the seedling stage is a connection with some plants here it is again a connection with the red gram kajanus kajan red gram connection with uh, this sandalwood plant so after some time it live individually okay so these are the characteristics and uh, the parts of leaf and uh, root tip zones in root tip and functions of the roots and uh, root modifications of different types we learned so tomorrow we'll go to the next uh, regarding the stem and its details thank you